I'm sorry to knock you up like this. Not at all. Good to see you. It's been a while. Indeed. Um, how's Margaret? Oh, she's well, you know, Margaret. Anyway, uh, do go through. I'll get uh, Miss Brooks to stick the kettle on. No, no, that's OK. Frankly, I'd rather have something stronger, Bunny, if you don't mind. Well, not at all, is it? Not sure if I've got it. Uh, no need. I brought a bottle with me. Finest malt. Glen Finish. Janet Sheed, the 1955. Have you a couple of glasses? Oh, sorry, old man, I don't seem to... Oh, never mind, a couple of teacups will do. Oh, fine, well, uh, uh, here you are. One for yourself? No, oh, why not? <laughs> Look, are you OK, old man? You're as white as a sheet. What brings you all the way to old Harley Street, hmm? Well, it's it's a bit silly, really. I'm, I'm afraid it's a professional matter. Professional? Really? Well, it's my profession or yours, hmm? Oh, well, yours... I'd like to talk to you in your position as Sir George Pink, psychiatrist to the great and good, as opposed to Bunny Pink, old school friend. Well, I never thought I'd see the day, eh? Sir George Finney, head of Her Majesty's Civil Service Internal Security, needing to talk to a shrink. <laughs> Even one of the most eminent in the business, eh? Well, there you are. Full of surprises, what? Well, it didn't mean to mock. It's just that, well, you know, I just suppose that, well, my clients are mainly government officials who are really great or indeed good. So what exactly can I do for you? Well, it's because of your clients I wanted to see you. You operate in the strictest confidence. MI5 regularly check and vet you because of the, the confidences you might be privileged to. That's why I know I can trust that what I'm going to tell you will be held in the strictest confidence. My goodness. Yeah, of course, old man. D anything you can tell me goes no further. But, look, dear fellow, why don't, why don't you take a moment and tell me what's been troubling you? Huh? Look, I need you to tell me, I need you to assure me that... that I'm a human being. Who that? I know it sounds crazy. I, I should explain. A couple of weeks ago, I had a... a visit... S10, you'd better show them in. Good morning. Good morning. I am Commander Coleman, S10 Department attached to United Nations Intelligence Task Force Special Operations. My identification? I appreciate your time, Sir George, as I need your help regarding something crucial to the security of this country. How... How can I help? I need to access information which is collated through your office, principally around absenteeism and unusual behaviour exhibited by government staff. Which ones? All of them, Sir George. All of them? Yes, although I'm aware this will take some time. For the moment, we can narrow the search to senior officials at the Cabinet Office, Home Office, Treasury and Ministry of Defence. Well, that's still thousands. Yes, Sir George. Look, you said something about this being significant to the security of the country. Yes, Sir George. What, exactly? I'm afraid that's classified ultra-secret. And you will be aware that I have that clearance. I can help you far more efficiently if I know all that you can tell me. If time is a factor, and I'm sure it is, we shouldn't waste any of it when I can pick up a phone and call any of a number of senior persons and be fully briefed by them. So, if you please... As much as I can tell you, and no more. Naturally. A few weeks ago, there was an incident over by the docks. An army bomb disposal unit was killed. A few other people too. Bad business. Quite a mess. After it was cleared up, the former scientific advisor at unit warned that, well, duplicates of senior officials had been placed in strategic positions by a foreign intelligence. Good Lord. Effectively, these duplicates would act as sleeper agents until activated by a prearranged signal. The cover was to be extremely deep. It's even possible that the duplicates themselves are not aware of what they really are until the signal activates them. Our job in special ops is to find and neutralise them. But how do you do that? I mean, if their cover is so good. At some point, they must have taken the place of the originals. We have concluded that this may have caused some level of absenteeism or odd behaviour within the workforce. A jump in statistics, sick leave, unauthorised absence, even disciplinary issues. These would all be around the Olympics this year, February. Indeed. 
Is that all you have to go on? No possible other routes of inquiry? Unfortunately not. Furthermore, the duplicates are perfect, but apparently unstable. This leaves us with a time factor. Either these duplicates will suffer psychological collapse, rendering the country vulnerable to attack, or the foreign intelligence who embedded them will activate them while they are still likely to be effective. This is astonishing. Indeed. But unfortunately, a very real threat. And, as I indicated, time is pressing. Good Lord. Sleeper agent? Exactly. The Russians? Uh, Not really right to say. Well, yeah, of course not. Sorry, old man, but... So could you help this search then? Well, it took a day or so to collate the departmental figures. In the first instance, I could only get a rough guide, but it was sufficient to get things started. Coleman was there to receive the files first thing the following morning. Practically took over my office. Were they right? I mean, uh, about the jump in numbers, I mean. Well, a sporting event like the Olympics always increases absenteeism to a certain extent. Had the same trouble in 82 with the World Cup and uh, Torval and Dean and... Well, once we'd got the numbers, it was all about putting a tick next to those who one might describe as being in a key position. It took a while, but, well, there was a very definite pattern. Really? A handful of senior officials, military, civil service, government, had all been absent from their places of work without giving a reason between the 8th and 15th of February 1984. This wasn't just an unannounced day off. This was people missing significant meetings or other duties without even a phone call, only to return the following day with a barely adequate excuse. That wasn't all, though. So we have about six in Department S10 that we should consider high risk based on these numbers. That's 29 across the departments where we were able to get the numbers quickly. It's a start. Look, your last visit got me thinking. Have you heard of something called the Desdemona file? I have heard the name. It's information sent directly from senior police officials to Westminster. If anyone carrying a government badge or with a specific security clearance is arrested, a report is made. Exactly. It's so that the right people can be informed before things take a more public turn. Indeed. The Desdemona file. (laughs) Named after the murdered wife in Othello. Bad joke, really, but there you are. As well as giving us a lead start in quelling potentially embarrassing situations, it's also useful for charting those who can't keep hold of their drink, their libido or their temper. It covers everything from drink driving to domestic violence, anything that might make one of our great and good uh, a security risk. I checked the report. Here. Interesting. Yes, the number of arrests significantly rises in late February. I know some of these people. They wouldn't say boo to a goose, let alone try and strangle their wives. If the people we're looking at are unstable, perhaps we should be looking here too. I agree. A number are in significant positions of authority. Extension 262, please. Commander Dale, please mobilise mobile unit 07. Location coordinates to follow. So what happened next? What, what did they do once they got their their list? Well, Coleman told me they had certain tests they could undertake. You see, they had found out that the sleeper's activation code was... Well, they would isolate the suspected persons, then they would use the word. If they, the suspect, reacted, they were taken in and... When what? And... A couple of days went by and the process was the same. We ran the numbers, we circled the names of those in significant key positions and then who were absent during the specified window. Then we checked them against the Desdemona file. More and more, the same names had ticked against all three columns. It was, well, to be honest, it was pretty depressing. Some were people I'd known, worked with, respected. Yeah, it sounds like like a very trying time. It has been. I've barely slept these past few days. Oh, my dear fellow. Naturally, you must be feeling drained. Well, I'm glad you came to see me. Uh, It's it's not that. I see... The lists. They came to me before I went through them with Coleman. The lists included my own department, and... And mine was one of the names that came up. Yours? 
yes, you see, I, I took a Friday off in late February, silly, really, just on a on a whim. I thought, I thought, bugger it, I'm I'm going to do something wild and reckless. I'm going to skip work and I'm going on an adventure. I ended up driving to Lake Windermere and going fishing. You're very rebellious. <laughs> well. <laughs> Anyway, on the way back, I was pulled over and breathalyzed. Only a few points over, after a few sips from the old hip flask. Nothing really, and a flash of the old badge took care of it. Or so I thought. But there I was, not only in the key positions list, but also noted as an absentee and in the Desdemona file. My dear fellow. I removed the page from the report before Coleman could see it, but... Well, what she said kept ringing in my head. It's possible that the duplicates themselves are not even aware of what they are. And I thought, I mean, I mean, just driving off and not telling one, it's not exactly me, is it? I mean, suppose, just suppose that this foreign intelligence, that they, I mean, I'd never know. I'm a senior civil servant working in government security. If anyone was planning to attack this country by replacing people in key positions, I must be high on their list. I mean, I'm on everyone else's. IRA, Libyans, even Bader Meinhof when they were around. And I'd never know, would I? Well, I suppose not. Well, that's why I came to you. You've known me longer than anyone. I thought you could tell me that if there was something you could see that was quintessentially me, you could look me in the eye and tell me once and for all that well, I was, that I am who I'm supposed to be. Look, old man, you're all right. We've been friends for years, and I can assure you that there is nothing, nothing remotely unusual about you. Okay, you're a, you're a little tired, jaded even, but who could blame you? You given the hours you must have been putting in? Look, let me tell you that you are the same old George I've known for years, huh? Believe me, old man, if you were anything but, I'd know. You're a good chap, Bunny. Yeah, look, let's have another drink. I can give you something to help you sleep. A good night's rest, I'm, I'm sure you'll be right as rain. I need to be sure. Look, just get some rest. Look, I have the activation word here, written on this piece of paper. The word that activates these sleepers. I want you to read it and then say it to me and look for any reaction, anything out of the ordinary. Just a twitch, a flicker is all. But I need to know, and I need you to say the word to me. Then, well, then I'll be sure. And I have to be sure. Just say the word? Yes, please. Very well. Ready? Yes. Dalek. Anything? Not a thing. Pupils didn't react, no no sweating, twitching, no no obvious physical sign whatsoever. Did you did you feel anything? No. Well, how long do you wait? I th- would think there'd be an instant reaction if Well, well there you are then. Worrying about nothing. You're as human as I am. That's a shame. What? It's a shame you used the phrase as human as I am. Why? Oh, Bunny, I gave you every chance. I even broke out the Glenfiddich Janet Sheed, the 1955, in the hope you'd spot that it was decidedly odd that your friend who didn't drink was sipping a 90,000 pound bottle of single malt from a teacup. You barely raised an eyebrow. Look, old man, I... (laughs) Then I asked about Margaret. What's she got to do with it? I asked you how she was. Again, you barely reacted. Neither affection or even guilt. Odd, considering a few weeks ago you beat her so badly she needed hospitalisation. Flash of the old security badge took care of it at the time, but... The Desdemona file. Look, what... What... What do you say? Psychiatrist to the great and good. The perfect placement for a sleeper, Bunny. What? No, 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 no. The moment the word left your lips, you started blinking like you were caught in a searchlight. Now you can barely get a sentence out. No much point in denying it, I'm afraid. B- Old man. B- b- but I, 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 I'm your friend, your f- f- friend. I'm afraid you aren't. And I had to see for myself. What, what, what happens now, now, now? Know me first. I want to know what happened to the real Sir Richard Bunny Pink. He's 
dead, I presume? Yes. Was it quick? Yes. I see. Well, at least I can offer you the same courtesy. No, don't try to get up. I assure you I'm quite proficient with the handling of this weapon. I don't suppose you're a praying man. Have you any last statement? No. No. Nothing to say except... Daleks! Sadly, not used one of these in years. Still, there are some things one prefers to do oneself. Barney and me were very close. Indeed. Shall we go? We still have much to do. I shall remain and arrange a clean-up team. There's a car outside. Very well. See you tomorrow. Yes. Oh, you should keep the whiskey. It's very expensive. I don't drink. Me neither, but Bunny did. And he'd hated to go to waste. I'll find it at home. Good night, Commander. Good night, Sir George.